Hello people, <clears throat> welcome back. And in this session, we are going to learn about how to calculate sigma level of any process. And my, when your specification value is nominal, which means <clears throat> you have upper specification limit as well as you have the lower specification limit. And in between upper and lower, both the specification you have to perform. In my previous two session, you have learned about how to calculate on the one-sided when higher is better and how to calculate for the one-sided when lower is better. And today we'll be learning about how to calculate the sigma level when you have both the specification limit. So how practically this works? Suppose you have the specification limit and this is how your data is distributed within the specification. Let's say here, I'm just putting some specification. Maybe this is your lower specification limit. So any value shouldn't be less than the orange line. And this is your upper specification limit. So practically, the values which are falling within the specification, value from here to here, that is meeting your specification, but value which is outside the specification, that is your probability of defect. So we'll be finding out how much is the defect and then we'll be calculating the sigma level in a process. Assuming an example, suppose you go and wanted to buy, let's say one air conditioner. In the air conditioner, your dealer is claiming you, boss, this air conditioner is automated and it is so good that it will not go less than, let's say, 22 degrees centigrade. And on the upper side, it will not go more than 26 degrees centigrade. You brought the air conditioner at home. You are a Six Sigma professional and you wanted to find out what my dealer is claiming that lower value will not be less than 22 which means my air conditioner will not give me less than 22 degrees centigrade temperature in any condition in my room and on the upper side it will not cross more than 26 degrees centigrade it will remain between 22 and 26 so you are a six sigma professional you wanted to find out let's see how well my actual air conditioner is doing so you started monitoring the temperature of the room for a couple of days, let's say you have monitored the data for last 30 days and 30 days temperature at a particular time you are recording and here is your 30 days of temperature listed. Let's generate some temperature data randomly in between 22 and 26. So random between 22, 25 plus decimal. Assuming this is your temperature, what we have recorded for this air condition for last 30 days. Now I have my data ready. I have my specification as well, what dealer is claiming. And I wanted to practically find out based on this temperature, what is my sigma level of the process. So you already have LSL and USL. Let me write it here for your easiness to understanding. Now what I need, we need a standard deviation as usual and we need the average value of this data. A standard deviation of this data is equal to stdev.p and here is my standard deviation, which is 0.98 is the variability. Now average value or my average temperature of the room when AC is running, it is for last 30 days data 24.07. It is little higher than the average I am looking for. So what average I am looking for if you want to see because value is nominal. So you will take the sum of these two value and then you divide this by two. So average temperature you are looking for 24 and it is little higher than the 24, which means it's on the upper side. So whichever the side your nominal value is moving, 
which means that side you have the high probability of defect so my sigma level on the upper side of a specification will be low because this is near and my probability of defect will be high so what do we do as we have calculated the sigma level in the previous sessions lower is better and higher is better we'll be using both the formulas here so z represented by sigma level first calculating for the z usl then z lsl will be calculating so value how do we calculate z as usl is equal to usl minus average divided by standard deviation z lsl is equal to your average will come first minus lower specification limit divided by the standard deviation this is the formula we'll be using and now actually i put these value into this formula so my z usl as per this formula will be is equal to what is the usl usl is 26 minus average 24.07 divided by standard deviation which is 0.99 so my sigma level on the upper side is 1.94 Sigma level on the lower side is equal to mean value, which is 24.07 minus LSL 22 divided by standard deviation, which is 0.99. So sigma level on the lower side of the specification is 2.09. This is my step number one I have completed. Step number two, I have to convert this into the probability of yield. So how do we convert this into the probability of yield? We will be using the formula and the name of the formula, I hope you remember from the last session, the value which we'll be using to convert this, this value will be norm S dist. So if I use the formula here is equal to norm S dist and select your Z value, so 1.95 sigma is equal to around 97.42% of the yield or output, which means the chance your air conditioner will not miss the upper specification limit is 97.43%. Similar way, we'll be converting 2.10. So what are the chance that my air conditioner will not miss lower specification limit? And that value is around 98.20%. This is step number two completed. Now, step number three, I will be looking for the defect probability on the same upper side as well as lower side. So, this is my Z. If I look for the defect, which is called Z USL, I am converting to defect, that will be the probability of defect on the upper side of a specification. And probability of defect on the lower side of a specification. You all know defect is equal to 1 minus yield. So, is equal to 1 minus yield percentage is 97.43. So, my defect on the upper side of a specification will be 2.57%. And the defect on the lower side of a specification will be 1.80%. In the next step, I have to find out what is my total defect because your process is generating the defect on the upper side as well as on the lower side. So now I have to take the sum of both the defect which is 1.80 plus 2.57. So my total defects are 4.37 percent. And if I convert this into the yield percentage, so 100% minus defect percentage is your yield percentage. So overall, there is a chance that 95.63% of the time, you will not miss your specification value. And the specifications values are minimum 22 and the maximum 26. So, my air conditioner will perform between 22 and 26. The chances are 95.63%. How to convert that into the sigma, which is your final sigma of the process, sigma level of the process, and this will be your long term. So, this value 95.63 is there. I will be converting this yield into 
the sigma by using the formula norm sine v, selecting the yield probability, which means my overall sigma of the process is 1.70. So, this is the way we will be calculating your sigma level of the process. 1.71 is your sigma level of the process. If these are your total defect, you already know how to calculate the defect per million opportunities. In the last session, you have learned is equal to defect multiplied by a million. Million means 10 power raised to 6. So, defect per million opportunities as of this data is around 43,682 defects will be there. This is the way we calculate the sigma level of the process as a long term. In case you are looking for the sigma level of your short term, so then short term sigma will be your long term sigma plus 1.5, which means there is a potential that your process may perform up to 3.21 but actual performance is 1.71. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next session.